Hello guys. In this lecture, we want to start another exciting topic called non-regular languages. Let's see what we got. Let me review a couple of things to shine our knowledge and make sure that we are on the same page. First thing is what is regular language? We define regular languages as this. A language is regular if there exists a DFA or an FA to accept it. Or we can define it if there exists a regex to represent it. Or if there exists a regular grammar to generate it or to produce it or represent it. These are the definition of regular languages. Also, we learned that most interesting languages in computer science are non-regular because, you know, regular languages are very simple languages. So more complex languages, all of them are non-regular. And also we learned that all non-regular languages are infinite. Look at this image. You see all of the finite languages are regular. A small portion of the infinite languages are regular. But here, whatever we have that are infinite languages, all of them are non-regular languages. So we shined our knowledge. Now let's look for a good reason for dealing with non-regular languages. The story started from this point that we were trying to find a way to figure out whether a language is non-regular or not. We mentioned a heuristic technique to look at the language pattern and guess whether it needs kind of memory or counter. Actually, it works fine for some languages, but there are a couple of issues here. First, it is not a mathematical proof. And second, we may make mistakes. For example, here is an example to show you that when you look at this example, you may think that it needs a counter. W has equal number of the AB and BA. But the point is, this is not non-regular because you can construct a DFA for this. That's why I ask to do it by yourself as an exercise. So based on this introduction and background, the objective of this lecture would be looking for a mathematical technique to prove a language is non-regular. But since all non-regular languages are infinite, we will focus on infinite languages. For this mathematical proof, we would need to introduce an important property of infinite regular languages. Before going further, let's look at our roadmap one more time and see where we are. As we have learned so far, computer science foundation that is called theory of computation is based on these major branches. We started with formal languages, but it was in fact an introduction. And we said we would get back to this. And we did, in fact, three times so far. First time we introduced regular languages, second time we introduced regexes, third time grammars, and this is the fourth time that we want to specifically talk about non-regular languages. Let's get started. To fully understand this topic, we need to review a couple of things. First, we need to review one-dimensional projection one more time and also the definition and the meaning of the simple cycle in graphs and also the pigeonhole principle that I assume you have learned it in the discrete mathematics but very briefly I will 
cover that here. Okay, so what was one-dimensional projection of a string? Look at this DFA. We are going to talk about this string, B-A-A-B. Any string can be considered as a walk because when you feed the B-A-A-B here, it starts from this B and then A and A and B. You see, this is actually a walk, right? And if we project it in one dimension, we will get this. As I said, every string is a walk and has its own one-dimensional projection. And also, we need to know that this string was not accepted. Yeah, it does not belong to this language. And if I just give you the one-dimensional projection, then you look at this because this is the state that machine stop at the end of the processing of the string, right? Since this is a regular state, so we know that this string was not accepted. The other thing here I want to mention is the Q2 was visited twice here. Yeah, all of this stuff that I am talking, we will need to uh, use them in a few minutes. Here is another example for one-dimensional projection. In this example, we have an NFA with four states, and we are going to input the W equal to this string. One-dimensional projection of this walk looks like this. And as you see, Q2 was repeated, Q3 was repeated. So Q2 is the first state that is revisited. Another topic is simple cycle. We know the definition of the simple cycle. It is a walk, a start from a state. We call it base and it ends to the same state. And the characteristics of this walk is none of the edges and the states are visited more than once. So in other words, all edges and all states or vertices are visited uniquely, except the base that is visited only twice. So here is an example. Look at this Q1 and Q4 and Q2 and Q5. And when we return back to Q1, we can call this as a simple cycle. The Q1, in fact, is the base and all of these states and edges are visited uniquely. I would like to show you this simple cycle in one dimensional projection. If we just project it in one dimension, it looks like this. It starts from the Q1 and it will end to Q1. So the Q1 is the states that it is repeated or visited twice. Okay, the important point here is if we have a simple cycle here, then all of these edges and all of these states are visited uniquely. So in fact, we have unique states and edges from here until here because this guy is the only states that is visited twice. This is very important point. All of these edges and states are visited uniquely. Our last but not least required background is pigeonhole principle. Let's see what it is. So if we have 10 pigeons and nine pigeonholes or boxes, then we can conclude that since the number of the pigeons are more than the pigeon holes, then at least one pigeon hole must contain more than one pigeon, right? As you see, if we put one pigeon in every boxes, then at least we have one pigeon hole that contains more than one pigeon. So here is the official 
a statement of the pigeonhole principle. If we put n objects into m boxes and n is greater than m, so the number of the objects is more than number of the boxes, then we can conclude that at least one box must contain more than one object. Maybe you are asking, so what is the relationship between pigeonhole principles and NFAs? That's a good question. Yeah, let's see what is the relationship. I'm going to explain that via this example. Look at this NFA. And let's say we want to process this string, A, 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 B. So this would be a walk, right? So we input A, 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 B here. And then what would happen? A, 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 B. Okay, so to find out the relationship between the pigeonhole principle and the NFAs, yeah, look at this string size. Its size is five, but we have four states. Can we conclude that based on the pigeonhole principle, at least one state must be visited more than once? Yes, that's the application of the pigeonhole principle here. Since the string is bigger than the number of the states, then at least one state should be visited more than once. All right. I would like to show this fact by one dimensional projection. As you see, Q2 was visited more than once and Q3 was visited more than once. But for some reasons that I will explain shortly, the first states that are visited more than once is our desired one. Okay, so if this is the case, now the question is, what is pigeon here and what is pigeonhole here? So definitely pigeons are, are the symbols of our string. And what is the pigeonholes? Yeah, we can consider them as the, the edges. So these edges can be considered the pigeon holes. But wait a minute, transition or the edges don't look like the holes we are looking for to put some pigeons in it, right? Okay, so no problem. We can switch to the states as well. Now we know that what the pigeon is, what the pigeon hole is okay so because every edge like this ends to a state like this yeah you look at this it ends with this this guy ends with this you might ask hey what what about the q1 yeah q1 doesn't have any role right so it's just an a starting point but for the processing if we have a loop in initial state, then yeah, we can consider the initial state as one active state that is contributing really. But the first one really doesn't have any role here. Based on this knowledge, let's look at the original NFA and let's see how we can consider each state as a pigeonhole. In these lectures, we may switch between these two, I mean, considering the edge or state as the pigeonhole. Both of them work fine. Now let's have a conclusion here. If we have an NFA and it has M states, and if we want to process a string whose size is more than the M states, the number of the states, or equal, then based on the pigeonhole principle, at least one state should be visited more than once. So why I am saying that or equal here? Because of that, the thing that I just said about the initial state, we may consider the initial state if it does not contribute in 
processing the string, yeah, we can remove that from our consideration. So if the string size is equal to the number of the states, then pigeonhole is applicable. In this section, I'm going to talk about a property of infinite regular languages. Yeah, you might ask, hey, we were supposed to talk about non-regular languages. Yeah, you will see the relationship later, but we need this property for talking about the non-regular languages. Let's see what it is. Let's say we have an infinite regular language. Okay, so when I say infinite regular language, based on this picture that we have seen many times so far, which area we are talking about? Definitely this is not this area because this area is for the finite languages. And we know that finite languages, all of them are regular. We are talking about this area, which is infinite, but regular language. So since this language is regular, we can assume that there exists an NFA that accepts L. And let's assume that this NFA has M states. And we know that NFA should have finite number of states. So definitely M is a finite number. Now, let's take a general string like this. We have K symbols. And let's assume that this string size is bigger than the number of the states, or at most is they are equal. Okay, so we have one string here whose size is greater than or equal the number of the states of that particular NFA. Okay, so based on the pigeonhole principle, since the W is greater than or equal to M. And one more time, this equal is because the initial state does not have any role for the processing. Okay, so based on the pigeonhole principle, in the walk of the W, at least one state should be visited more than once. So let's assume that the following graph is the one dimensional projection of the W. Let me ask some questions here. Why is the last state accepting a state? This guy, why it is accepting a state? Yeah, the answer is very obvious. Because we picked this W from the language, and this NFA should accept that string. So this final state will be the states that the processing stops. So definitely, it should be a final state or accepting a state in order to accept that string. Okay, another question. Can we have another accepting state in somewhere else? For example, this or this or this. Yeah, we can have any number of accepting state. We don't mind here. The only thing that we mind is the last one. Let me mention here that we assume that this Q is the first repeated state. So we already know that we have a repeated state. Let's assume that this Q is the first one. And here I need to mention something. Even though this Q is the first repeated state, we need to assume that there is no nested repeated state state here. For example, another state that are repeated more than once. If this is the case, then we don't consider this one. We consider this one as the first repeated state because our goal is to have unique states between these two for the reasons that I will explain later. Okay, so this is an important thing. All right, based on this knowledge, we can assume that this is the first repeated state. And between these two guys, we will have simple cycle. Okay, so it means that if we convert this to the original transition graph, we will have a simple cycle here, something like this. 
Okay, you might ask, what is the shape of the transition graph after this? Yeah, we don't mind that. The only thing that we mind here is from here to here and from here to here. We will explain all of this shortly, but for now, just keep in your mind that this is the case. Okay, so let's review our facts so far. From A1 to AI, we have unique states. Why we are talking about? Because we assume that Q1 is the first repeated one. So it means that before that, we will have unique states. Second fact, from AI plus 1 until AJ, again, we have unique states because this is a simple cycle okay so this guy is the only repeated one but before that we need to have unique states okay so if we combine these two facts we can conclude that we have unique states from here until here fantastic okay so now Let's put a name for all of these areas that we talked. We can split the strings W as X, Y, Z. And let's say that they are just variable substrings. And we name this portion from the beginning until right before of the first state that is repeated. We call it X. So A1 to AI. From AI plus 1 until AJ, we call it Y. And the rest of that, we call them Z. So this is just some names that we will be using during these lectures. And this Y is the important part. It is between the first repeated state until the next one. So this is called Y. This is an important part of this splits okay now let's look at the same projected graph and let's see how it looks like when we convert it to the original one so the x is here the y is on the simple cycle and the rest of that is z okay now based on this knowledge let me ask very important questions first question is this a true statement? X, Y, the size of this portion of the string is less than or equal to M. Look at here. So the X is here. The Y is here. And if we concatenate this X and Y, is this the case that this portion of the string's size should be less than or at most equal to M. Yeah, that's true because, you know, we have rest of that. You know, just remember that M is number of the states of this machine. So, yes, that's true. Okay, next question. Is this the case that the size of Y is greater than or equal to 1? So we are talking about this or this. Is this the case? Yeah, just remember that we said it is a simple cycle from here to here, right? What is the simplest simple cycle? A loop. And if it is a loop, its size is 1. Otherwise, it is more than 1. So, yeah, definitely this is a true statement as well. All of these questions I am asking, yeah, we will have some meaning for them shortly. More questions. Is a string XZ, XZ here, that contains A1, A2, up to AI, and then it starts AJ plus 1 until the AK. So if we concatenate this X and Z and create a new string, is this the case that this string will be accepted? Of course, yes. Because if we input that string xz here, the x part goes from here to here, and the z part goes from here to here and stops here, right? And will be accepted. Absolutely. Okay, now the important question. 
is this the case that x y y z or x y y y z will be accepted so we already know that x z is accepted x y z is accepted because the x y z is the original strings that yeah, you know x and y and the z okay now the question is which is the most important one x y y z will be accepted yeah look at this x y y and then z what is it saying it means that we can have any number of y's here and the resulting string will be accepted that's the point so any number of y's we can pump between the x and z and the resulting string will be accepted let's have a conclusion here if l is an infinite regular language and if we have an nfa and that nfa has m states and we pick a string w from this language in such a way that its size is greater than or equal to m and if we split it in a certain way that it uh, you know it satisfies some conditions then we can pump any number of y's here and the resulting string would belongs to the language l fantastic right okay so this is the introduction for an important theorem that we call it pumping lemma in this section we want to introduce pumping lemma we already know what's the meaning of pumping but what is lemma here in math lemma is a small theorem that helps proving a bigger one and in computer science this lemma is very famous let's see what it is let's assume we have a language that is infinite regular language so which area we are talking about this area infinite regular language the pumping lemma is saying that if this is the case for every infinite regular language there exists an m greater than or equal to one so the formal definition of the pumping lemma does not talk about the dfa or nfa it is talking about existing an m which is an integer number greater than or equal to one such that if we pick a string from this language whose size is greater than or equal to this number then pumping lemma guarantees that we must be able to split this string into three parts in such a way that all of the following conditions are satisfied the size of the xy is less than or equal to m the size of the y is greater than or equal to one and also we may pump any number of y's and the resulting string still belongs to this language okay here is the pumping lemma statement but i put some steps number here so first of all there exists an m we need to pick one m and this is the step number two pick a w from this language step number three check that its size is greater than or equal to m a step four is splitting the w into x y z and step five is checking this step six checking this and step seven creating the strings by pumping the y's and step eight check the several i's and see whether the resulting w belongs to language or not so this is the way that we verify the 
pumping lemma. Okay, so one more time, I put all of those steps here for your reference. Now let's take some examples and see how the pumping lemma verification works. The language is this, A to the N, B, and N is greater than or equal to zero. We know that this is a regular language and it is infinite regular language. All right. So the pumping lemma should be applicable to this language. Let's see. So we start from the taking an M. Yeah, let's take M as two, three, but we don't do that. We don't take it as a constant number like two or three. We always take it as M. So we take the M as the number of the states of that NFA or whatever it is, or the FA. But during the verification, if we really need, we can put some boundary on the M because, you know, picking the M is our responsibility. Okay, so we pick the M. So this is the first guy. The second step is to pick a W from this language. You know, the best way is usually A to the M, this number here, and B. Since M is a constant, so this is a, an a string. Just remember this. This is not a pattern. This is a string. So A to the M, B. For example, if M was 2, then it is A, A, B. So this string will be A, A, B. But we don't do this as I explained here. Not two, not three, nothing. Yeah. We just keep all of the strings like this. So this is the third step. We need to check whether its size is greater than or equal to M or not. So the size of the W is equal to the size of the A to the M, B, which will be M plus one, yeah, because we have M A's plus one B. Is this the case that it is greater than or equal to M? Yes, it is. M plus one is greater than M. So this is the third step. Fourth step is splitting this string into three parts. W equal to A to the M B equal to Okay, so this is actually needs some skills and experiences. By solving some problems, you get this idea. X, Y, Z, all right, equal to, how can I split this? I would pick the X as the lambda. I put Y as A. And the rest of that, what we get, the rest of that will be our Z. So... I have one A here, so the rest of that will be A to the M minus one B. This is my Z, this is my Y, and this is my X. So this was the step number four. All right, the pumping lemma is saying that if we split in this way, then all of the following conditions should be satisfied. What was that? Yeah, number five, x, y should be less than or equal to m. Okay, so let's see. My x is lambda. My y is a. And its size is one. Is this the case that it is greater, less than or equal to m? Yes. M is at least one. So this was the step number five. Step number six was verifying that the size of Y is greater than or equal to one. So our Y here is just A. Its size is one. And one is greater than or equal to one? Yes. Okay. Step number seven. We need to pump any number of y's here. We would say wi is equal to x, y to the i, z. 
so we just substitute the x and y and z so the x is lambda this is, will be vanished a to the i this is my y and the z is a to the m minus 1 b and step 8 is verifying that the resulting string for several i's will belong to this language okay so for i equal to zero here this a will be vanished and we will get a m minus one b is this the case that this belongs to this language we would say yes it belongs to language how about for i equal to one actually i equal to one is the strings that we already picked from here so definitely it is yes let's go with the i equal to two so here it will be a square a m minus one b if we simplify this it will be a m plus one b okay so since m is just the constant plus one it will be you know increased by one and is this the case that this string belongs to our l yes it belongs to l this language is saying that any number of a's so definitely this guy belongs to l yeah we can continue i equal to three and we will get a to the three a m 1 b and it will be a m plus 2 b again this belongs to this language and you see the pumping lever can be verified in this way okay here is another example all right so first pick a number yeah we always pick it as m 2 pick a string from here so w is equal to yeah probably the b a to the m is the best one here so this is my w3 verifying that the size of the w which is the size of the b a to the m again it will be 1 plus m it is greater than or m yes for splitting w into three parts so this way yeah be careful about here this step actually needs some experience i would say a b will be my x and a will be y and the rest of that will be the z so this is the way that i split here but during the verification if you notice that you cannot satisfy all of those conditions then you need to return back here and split it a different way 5 x y is less than or equal to m so the x y is equal to b a which is 2 is this less than or equal to m we can say yes we pick m in such a way that it is greater than 2 because you know picking the m is our responsibility and sometimes we need to make some boundary for that then we would say yes we pick m greater than or equal to 2 that's fine so if this is the case then we would say yes with this constraint yes all right so is this the case that the size of the y is greater than or equal to one yeah let's see the y is equal to our y is just a then its size is one and then yes it is greater than or equal to one so this one is satisfied as well the seven is creating the strings so w i is equal to x y to the i z so our x is b our y is a to the i 
and our z is a to the m minus 1. So this is the wi and the eighth step is verifying for several i. So i equal to 0, it will vanish this guy and it will be b a m minus 1. Is this the case that this guy belongs to this? We would say yes, it belongs to the language. Because, you know, M based on this constraint is greater than or equal to 2. So definitely this won't be a negative number, right? So this belongs to L, we would say yes. And for i equal to 1, yeah, definitely it belongs. So let's check the i equal to 2. It will be b a square a m minus 1, which is equal to b a m plus 1. And this belongs to language. And you can continue here. Okay. So these two examples gives you some idea that how the pumping lemma can be verified. Now, let me give you some notes here. A string like this, a to the m, b, is just one string. Again, it is not a pattern because m is a constant. So just remember this because this is a source for confusion for some students. Our second note here is take w as simple as possible what does it mean for example in the previous examples we could take the w as something like this a to the 2m b or a to the m plus 100 b yeah it is possible we take the w anything but Take it as simple as possible to make your life easier to prove or verify the pumping lemma. The third note is I pointed out during the example, but here I want to mention it again. Make sure that no string gets negative power. For example, if somewhere in our proof we get something like this, a to the m minus 3, we need to mention that we pick m greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so just recall that pumping lemma has this power because, you know, taking the m is our responsibility and we can make any boundary for them. But if we have something like this, we don't need to mention that because by default, m is greater than or equal to 1. Just remember that M is the number of the states of that DFA or NFA, right? And it should have at least one state. I put some exercises for you guys. And I'm gonna stop here. See you guys in the next video.